chapter 29, verse 8 of the book of Exodus, and continuing. And you shall bring his sons and put coats upon them. And you shall gird them with girdles, Aaron and his sons, and put the bonnets on them. And the priest's office shall be theirs for a perpetual statute. And you shall consecrate Aaron and his sons. Notes. If it is to be noticed, Aaron was a anointed before the blood was shed as it respects the sacrifices being offered. This was done in this manner because he stands before us as the type of Christ who in virtue of what he was in his own person was anointed with the Holy Spirit long before the work of the cross was accomplished. The sons of Aaron, even as we shall see on the other hand who in a sense represented believers were not anointed until after the blood was shed, presenting the fact that the Holy Spirit could not come until until after the cross. <coughs> Verse 10. Had a little cough there. Verse 10. And you shall cause a bullock to be brought before the tabernacle of the congregation, and Aaron and his sons shall put their hands upon the head of the bullock. Notes. In effect... It's like they're transferring their sins to this innocent victim. This portrays Christ taking our sins upon himself and then paying the penalty for those sins which we will see uh, momentarily. And on some side notes, I think I've said this at least two or three times, that a lot of these things to the unspiritual eye seem bizarre and maybe even wicked because some people would cry, this is animal abuse and this is savagery. But you must understand that these sacrifices and these things that they are doing, they were meant to be uncomfortable. You know, it would be like if I took my little dog, Snowball, and held him up here and just slit his throat. People would think, man, what is wrong with you? This signifies the awesome price that was paid at Calvary. Verse 11. And you shall kill the bullock before the Lord and the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. Notes. This was actually commanded by the Lord. This tells us that Jesus had to die. In fact, his crucifixion was not an execution or even an assassination. It was, in fact, a sacrifice. It had been planned by God from before the foundation of the world. It was the very purpose for why Christ came, and he never once even strayed from that path. 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18 through 20 will give you a little bit more insight into that. And I certainly prefer that you uh, pause my speaking and look that up. Verse 12. And you shall take of the blood of the bullock and put it upon the horns of the altar with your finger. Notes. These horns specify power as well. These horns were on all the four corners of the altar pointing toward the north south, east, and west. This signified the power of the cross in delivering man from sin. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18. Go ahead and look at that. And, this, and that this great salvation would be for all of humanity, hence the horns pointing in all directions. Scripture. And pour all the blood beside the bottom of the altar. Notes. This signified that the blood would be shed by Christ at the crucifixion in the pouring out of his life, which would re redeem humanity, at least for those who will believe. That's in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 13 and onward. Verse 13. Hmm. Got a little yawn there. It's really late. And you shall take all the fat that covers the inwards and the cow that is above the liver, and the two kidneys, and the fat that is upon them, and burn them upon the altar. <laughs> Notes. The fat signified the health and prosperity of the animal, signifying that God would give his best for our redemption, and as well, it signified blessing upon the one who receives redemption. Galatians chapter 2, verse 20 through 21 gives you a little more insight. Verse 14, But the flesh of the bullock and his skin and his dung shall you burn with fire without the camp. It is a sin offering. Notes, The curse of sin which was on them made them unfit for food and even unworthy of burial within the camp. So 
The remains were to be taken outside of the camp and burned with fire. Jesus was the sin offering. He suffered without the camp, in effect, without the gate. Look up uh, Hebrews chapter 13, verse 12 for some more insight. And we're on to verse 15. And you shall also take one ram, and Aaron and his son shall put their heads uh, upon the head of the ram. And you shall slay the ram, and you shall take his blood and sprinkle it round about upon the altar. Notes, this portrayal in the Levitical offerings of substitution and identification is the very heart of the gospel. Jesus Christ became our substitute, and we identified with him, and are thereby saved. As the young bullock of verse 10 represented Christ at the height of his manhood, giving himself for the sins of the world, the ram represented Christ in his position as king. The ram signified that the death of Christ was not merely the death of just anyone. It was the death of the Son of God, the King of the kings, and the Lord of the lords. Verse 17. And you shall cut the ram in pieces. Notes, uh, signifying that sin is more than just a surface problem, it goes to the very vitals of the individual. Scripture, and wash the inwards of him. Notes, this portrays the purity of Christ. Scripture, and his legs, and put them into his pieces and unto his, uh, and, and unto his head. This signified that the walk of Christ was perfect and portrays the fact that Christ was perfectly lucid at all times during the crucifixion. Verse 18. And you shall burn the whole ram upon the altar. It is a burnt offering unto the Lord. Scripture. The burnt offering signifies consecration. The Lord would give heaven's best for our redemption. Uh, scripture, it is a sweet savor, an offering made by fire unto the Lord. Notes, it was such because it represented what Christ would do in order to redeem fallen humanity. The fire signified the judgment of God which came upon Christ instead of upon us. Once again, it's the doctrine of substitution and identification. And uh, on a personal note, I used to work at a uh, slaughterhouse... And, of course, this, uh, the smell of it was absolutely horrendous. But uh, the burning of this sacrifice represented the sin leaving that person and being transferred to Christ and being done away with, basically. So, uh, this is not saying that God enjoyed the odor, but he enjoyed the effect of what was going on. Verse 19. And you shall take the other ram, and Aaron and his sons shall put their hands upon the head of the ram. Notes, do so before it was killed. Then you shall kill the ram, and take of his blood, and put it upon the tip of the right ear of Aaron. Uh, notes, uh, this seems to present the fact that Christ heard only the Father. You can read in John chapter 14, verse 24. Scripture, and upon the tip of the right ear of his sons, and upon the thumb of their right hand, and upon the great toe of their right foot, and sprinkle the blood upon the altar round about. Notes, this proclaimed the fact that they could not live as they ought to live, do as they ought to do, be as they ought to be, without faith in Christ and what he would do for us at the cross. Uh, it also proclaims the fact that Christ always did right, and he always walked right, regarding character. We'll have to pick up in Exodus chapter 29, verse 21. Thank you for your time.